I, I know you worked extremely hard today. I, I think I have seen you already three or four times, and I know we have had so many sessions. Well, I could say the same for you, Mr. President. Uh, we've been together most of the day. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm very happy that we had this, uh, we had this opportunity to have uh, at least uh, a chat about some of the issues of the day. And congratulations on your elections. Uh, how many months have you been in office now? Uh, it, we, I took office, uh, inauguration was the 1st of July. Yeah. So uh, more or less six months, ho seven ho months now. How has it been? As expected or better or worse? Well, pretty much as expected. I, ha <laughs> I, have, the, I have the advantage of uh, having spent years watch being yeah. president. So I had a very good idea of what it entailed. Now, of course, uh, it's different from uh, a son watching his dad uh, doing his job uh, as the, you yourself doing that job. So uh, it's, a, it's like I'm in the same uh, setting, but playing a different role. But at least I know, the, I know, I, I know what needs to be done and uh, I have a fair idea uh, how it used to be done anyway, and uh, so I have I have models that I can follow templates that I can follow But uh, in your father's time there was no social media. No, no, no social media uh, Yes, that's that's actually in in politics I think all around the world not only in the Philippines that suddenly social media has become such an enormous force uh, Not only in politics, but in all other walks of life. So yes, that is the new feature and I think maybe we could say that the world is more complex and confrontational now uh, than uh, back when your father was well, present, that more complex in the region? Yes, because it was simpler then. Uh, for example, when you talk about foreign policy for yeah. a country like the Philippines, you choose. You were with the Americans or you were with the Soviet Union. Uh, that was still the Cold War. We were still in the midst of the Cold War. And so, yes, it was simpler then. Uh, but uh, it's uh, that kind of uh, that that kind of arrangement or that kind of uh, uh, the spheres of influence, as we used to call them, I, I don't think uh, applies anymore. However, uh, uh, we were we spoke about this uh, in another session, and uh, the forces that are sort of tending to push us back into this bipolar, I mean, not in a psychiatric sense, but bipolar world uh, is, are, are quite strong. Yeah. But I think most of the leaders and uh, most strategists uh, they are, are, are you know, we should not fall back into that, uh, that, kind, of, uh, that kind of situation where um, all countries have to choose uh, which side uh, they, will, they will be on. Uh, so when asked which side are you on, I said, well, I don't work for I don't work for Beijing. I don't work for Washington D.C. I work for the Philippines, so I'm on the side of the Philippines, and that really translates into a very simple uh, statement of foreign policy, which is um, uh, I promote the national interest. And uh, the national uh, interest, uh, the national interest also. Uh, has led uh, to the fact, I think you, you've been already in Beijing and yes. visited uh, uh, President Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. uh, did your father go to Beijing? My father went to, uh, she, he would, well, I was, I have a, we have, my family has uh, quite uh, a history uh, with the People's Republic because the, in 1974, uh, I was 16 years old, my mother took her, took me with her on the first visit uh, to of uh, Filipino delegation to China, and that was the precursor to the establishment of diplomatic relations. And so after that, we met with Shaun Lai. I was uh, uh, we met with the chairman, Chairman Mao Tse Tung. Uh, and Deng Xiaoping was number three then. Uh, so we uh, that's that's how it all began. The next year. Uh, the whole, the, my, my father brought a, a formal delegation because we were unofficial with my mother. He brought a formal delegation where uh, they, set the, uh, they set the framework for the establishment of diplomatic relations between uh, the PRC and the, uh, and the Philippines. I guess a very different China you visited now oh, than you visited in the 1970s. Completely, 
completely, and it's just absolutely remarkable um, uh, what, what we saw in China uh, in 1974. And what we saw, because after that, there were many uh, subsequent to the signing, especially of the diplomatic relations. And, but the, the rapid, rapid, rapid growth uh, and modernization of China is, well, is just remarkable. I think uh, the, everyone here is perfectly familiar with how that happened. But still, when you think of the time that it took them, for example, a place like Xiamen, uh, when we went to, first went to Xiamen, it was a little village. Even, Guan, even Guangzhou. Guangzhou was like a, it was a small it was a small city and now it's uh, you could you could be in any of the great uh, Western capitals uh, um, in terms of sophistication in terms of uh, development in terms of wealth it's uh, it has been absolutely remarkable to watch is China now your most important trading partner yes they are our largest uh, right now they are our largest trading partner and the U.S. number two or the U.S., I think, is number three now, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, be, because the, especially since the lockdown, since the pandemic, uh, the alliances between uh, our neighbors has become very strong. For example, the uh, biggest uh, contributor for foreign direct investment now is Singapore, yeah. into the Philippines. Wow. Um, and I think the next, uh, uh, Japan and Korea are following. Uh, on its heels, so it, it, it's very much a regional because I think there has been a, a consensus amongst uh, uh, the Southeast Asian countries, Asia Pacific countries, that uh, we have to build these partnerships together. Uh, and the idea was really that uh, because of we, we need to uh, to and to have these partnerships because we are coming into an uncertain uncertain uh, world with the post pandemic. Uh, uh, global economy, and so those partnerships are strong. So we have, we have been very active um, in ASEAN, APEC, uh, to promote those partnerships, and uh, that's why I think uh, the the balance in terms of trade and in terms of uh, assistance has has, has changed uh, over the years. I was quite surprised to hear that Singapore was number one on the FDI side, and you said second Japan and then Korea. I think that's where we are now, yeah. but I think it's going to move. Uh, it's and, going to but move. I expected maybe China among the three, but maybe many Chinese companies invest through Singapore. Yes, well, I, they invest everywhere. I mean, you know, the, 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 uh, before, the, before the pandemic, uh, the, uh, uh, the economic activity of China in other places, because, uh, because uh, they were... Uh, uh, with the rapid growth that they were, had planned for themselves, the demand for resources, uh, mineral resources, you know, all kinds of uh, different uh, resources that they, they uh, cannot produce as quickly as they need it. Uh, so they've gone to, they've gone to other, uh, other areas for their supplies. So it's been they, the same thing with the Philippines, uh, they, uh, especially, especially at that, that period uh, a few years back where China was growing at 10% every year, uh, 10 to 12%. In fact, there were times, there were years that they, they were saying that they were posting 12% growth. Um, and that, that was the time that the China was really hungry for all the different resources. Energy, for example, uh, building materials, for example, minerals, for example, all of this uh, were, was, uh, was in high demand by the, by the Chinese economy. But it's incredible that I, I think now uh, Philippines is the fastest growing of the ASEAN countries? Of, I think in ASEAN, I think uh, we are still the fastest growing. Yeah, around 7, 8 percent. But since China is also such an important market for you, how do you explain that when China now has been growing a bit slower, that mm. you have maintained or, or created such an uh, impressive growth? Because that's not the situation in the rest of the world because the, the growth has been going down. Well, it, it, it was, it was a, it's a deliberate, um, it was a de it's a deliberate uh, effort on our part. Uh, because when you, we look at the alarming numbers such as uh, uh, debt to GDP ratios uh, in the Philippines, although I always say we are doing better than our neighbors, uh, the numbers is 62 percent it is now, uh, is still very high for us. So uh, the, 
the, the strategy is to have high growth rates and to pull us out of that, that situation. And so we've done everything. First of all, the, after the pandemic or after, as we came on, as the pandemic has begun to subside, uh, the main concern were jobs. And that was one that was one of the areas. And we concentrated uh, on the MSMEs, the uh, uh, micro, uh, medium and to medium scale enterprises, micro, small, medium scale enterprises, because that comprises such a large part of our economy. And it's, it's the same in most ASEAN countries. And I think that's where the growth is coming from. Uh, so we were always very worried that of the talk that we were hearing on, uh, on the forecasts on the international eco on the economies uh, of different countries. And we kept hearing, especially later last year, we kept hearing about um, a recession that would be coming. So we, look very, we kept looking very closely at our unemployment rate, which is now running at 4.1, 4.2%, and this is coming, is coming down. And in fact, our unemployment rate now is lower than it was before the pandemic. So we estimate that we have created uh, about 2 million jobs uh, since wow. then. So as long as the, in my, my theory, my belief, and I think I'm, I'm right in that, is that as long as the unemployment rate stays uh, low, then uh, the recessionary forces are something that we can resist. And so that's why I think that's what, that, that, that gives a good foundation for, for, the, uh, for growth. But well, what are the key growth areas? Well, we have, uh, the, the, let me talk about the areas that uh, did well uh, yeah. during, uh, during uh, the uh, lockdowns, so the strict lockdowns in the pandemic the past uh, two years. Uh, one of the businesses that uh, was proce business processing, the BPOs, uh, that uh, kept going simply because of the nature of the technology. People could work from home. Uh, the other area that has been uh, very active and continues to grow is, is mining, uh, that side of uh, the, uh, uh, the, that part of the economy. Uh, we have been a traditional exporter, uh, manufacturer and exporter of, semi of semiconductor products, of uh, chips, uh, and that continues to be an important factor. But the Philippines also has a very specific, uh, has a very specific advantage in that we have approximately 10 million, maybe more, uh, overseas workers uh, that, are, that are working uh, all over the world and who remit to their families. Uh, so that, that to remit, who remit uh, money to their families. And uh, that has been, in the times of really real difficulty for the economy, that has really been a, uh, a buffer for us. It, it, the remittances now comprise about 9% already of, uh, of, uh, uh, of what, we, what, what, we, what the government is using to, um, uh, to fuel this growth. You also have a seven decades long uh, agreement uh, with the U.S., on, on security. Uh, is that something that you want to keep? Oh, it, it's probably, I would say, it'd be not even more than seven decades. Uh, it's been a, over a century uh, in different guises. Uh, uh, we, we, the, the, so that, that has evolved in very many ways. I mean, we started off as a commonwealth of yeah. the United States uh, earlier in the 20th century, and then further on, we gained liberation after the war, after the Second World War, 1945. So, <clears throat> and so, in that, but the, the, the connection between the Philippines and the United States has remained strong. Uh, and we are their only treaty partner in Asia. Uh, and so that, 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 is, that has grown stronger and stronger, but uh, it has to, I always say that uh, we can, the only way for it to remain strong and to remain relevant is to evolve that relationship. So it can no longer be uh, simply a, uh, what, what it was before. Uh, and the, the, the Philippines has changed, the United States has changed, the world has changed, and now uh, we are living within the context of all of these other forces that are coming out 
uh, its region around South China Sea. So uh, again, uh, to be able to respond properly, we have to evolve these relationships. And uh, the, the, I, I have to say that uh, it continues to go. We, pro we, we, we are progressing along that evolution very well. Um, and uh, we are able to continue, not only in terms of, uh, in terms of trade uh, and in terms of uh, diplomatic uh, <coughs> relationship, uh, but beyond that, is, uh, there is, we have security arrangements with the United States uh, and that, have, that front. Whereas perhaps we, we were a bit on the back burner for a little while, that has again come to the forefront because of the increased tensions in our part.